are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Podcast fam, what is up? Colin here with my number one dog. What up, Mike? <laughs> Mike D's in the house. Michael D's in the house. Hey, we just wanted to tell you guys that we have a new texting service, right? If you want to get notified when these episodes go out, all you have to do is text WOA GNV, that's W H O A G N V, to 484848. Do that and you will get notified every time a new episode goes out. It'll text it right to your phone so you can be the first to listen in. I'm subscribing right now. You doing it right yeah, now? Yeah, I do it. I you wanted to see it? what it said. All right. 484848 is the number. Text W H O A G N V. We will see you later. Bye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. My name is Colin Austin and I'm your host and my co-host is the bee's knees selling scoots with ease paying salaries. He is the daring, the dazzling Michael Dees. What is up, it, it man? It changes every week. It, it's great. <laughs> Not much, man. How are you this morning? I'm great. Good. I am pumped. Did you see the game last week? <laughs> no. We crushed Miami by three touchdowns. <laughs> Did we? It's fantastic. <laughs> Let's let's hope. Uh, we actually don't know. We yeah, have we no idea. What <laughs> we're 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 recording this episode well in advance. <laughs> July today is July sixteenth, but today is August twenty sixth. The Gators played on Saturday, and hopefully, hopefully they smashed them. And if not, then we apologize for. We probably won't talk about it then. Yeah, we probably <laughs> <laughs> we probably won't talk about it. But so I mean, like really though. And like I'll pull, I, I need to introduce Wade in a second, but maybe you can get in here on this a little bit. I mean, we have, I mean, how are the Gators gonna look in there? I mean, you are, people might not know this about you, but you are like die hard Gator, <laughs> like die hard. When I was the last have. time you, you missed a home game? Do you even remember? The last home game I was not at was the FSU game in 2003. The FSU game in 2003. Yeah. You've been to every home and I was, game. That's because I was in high since. school. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, you are diehard. So how many? How how are we looking this season? We're looking good. You think we're gonna be the all right? The biggest weaknesses I think are probably the running game, which we've got good players. They just haven't really carried much in the line. Uh, quarterback Felipe was awesome at the end of the year, so hopefully he can maintain that. Okay. And defense should be good. Kicking should be good. Receivers are we've probably the most receiver talent we've had in a long time. Um, Georgia's the best in the east which sucks but but i think we can we can can take them down yeah can i crush them coming after you we'll see we'll see well dude i'm going to introduce you to our guest we should do that (laughs) (laughs) and then maybe we can have him comment on gator football we kind of do things in a weird order around here sometimes yeah you know keep it fresh i I don't know whether to introduce him first or to like you know leave the audience in suspense yeah leave the audience exactly (laughs) It's just Mike and Colin this time. <laughs> that would that would be a, a bad show, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, but you guys, let me introduce you to our guest, my good friend Wade Swikel, president and CEO of Two College Brothers, Gainesville's fastest growing moving company with a second location <laughs> location <laughs> location in Tampa, Florida, and visions to expand nationwide. Dude, what is up? Thanks for having me here, Colin. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about this podcast. I got up early, did my push-ups, and uh, I'm ready to get going. Yeah. Are you, so are you you've been a morning person, right? Like pretty yes. normally. I mean, yeah. what time do you start your day? Uh, lately, it's it's been like six a.m. Um, but I, I mean, you know, when I when I really get in a groove and, and get dialed in, like four four thirty, and yeah. Uh, and yeah, beat the world up, beat the sun up. So do you do you do your workout in the morning? Sometimes, okay. uh, yeah, sometimes. But not it, all it, time. it depends what I have going on. So, so if I know that I'm not going to be able to get a workout in in the afternoon, I try to go in the morning. Um, I like to do my workout in the morning, but I also like to use that time to to focus on projects that I can't otherwise get done other times of the day. So, you know, get a nice little coffee buzz going. I like to mix some butter and some coconut oil in my coffee. I've been known to mix all kinds of crazy stuff in there, you know, almost from a biohacking type perspective. I've thrown cracked eggs in there, blueberries, almond butter, um, you know, other random things. <laughs> all right. Wow. And so, so when you say you did push-ups before coming on the podcast, 
Like, do you get hyped up, get pumped up? I mean, how many push-ups did you do? Um, I mean, not very many. 10, 10 <laughs> okay, 15. Okay, just yeah. the old blood flow. Yeah. It was like a, a push-up a push no, workout this morning. It was like a thousand water, burpees. Like, he was so <laughs> into the podcast. Just enough to get your energy flowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, no. somebody told me, like, that you should, you know, before speaking, he's like, yeah, you know, before I go on stage and I speak, like, I do, like, 10, 15, 20 push-ups. Just get that blood flowing and get that rush. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, actually, that's probably pretty smart well another <laughs> another good one that i've found to really like get you in a good mood for the day is overhead press or snatches because you have that that like arm motion going ahead it's like you're a champion and, and it's like the the mind body connection type type complex so it's like there's a lot of studies that show that how your um your your body language affects your mind and then there's a lot of correlation there with you know mind sets the sets the 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 mood and mood controls or i'm sorry body sets the mood and mood controls the body type of a thing and there's a lot of back and forth with that um so that's that's another reason why i I, normally if i'm trying to get something you know have like a good day or give a talk or do something cool like i like to do a little workout in the morning because it it sets it sets those endorphins off and it also kind of just like gets you in like a confident state Mm -hmm. uh so that's you know there's there's a lot of stuff on that (laughs) i'm not gonna get to it there's a lot more people more there qualified than me to talk about it. <laughs> you know, Sherelle team's going to be upset good. when I make them do overhead presses every morning during back to school season. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody get hyped. Let's go. Pumped up, man. Well, cool. Well, thanks for being here, man. Thanks yeah, for waking, no, up, waking up early and joining us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be so, here. I mean, so what do you think about Gator football? I mean, well, yeah, you know, I, I follow Gator football. I go to as many games as I can. I'm I'm not the uh, the guest to come on and talk uh, sports strategy with with the with the Gators. You know, I, I enjoy watching the team. Um, I think we're going to be good this year, though. I mean, last year we definitely had a turnaround season, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm I'm excited to see what we have in store. I think we have two key games this year, and that's Miami and Auburn, and the two teams we don't get to play that much. Where there's a lot of intense rivalry. I know I've got a lot of friends coming in uh, for the Auburn game, and then we're going down to Orlando for the Miami game and uh, staying at Disney and uh, doing doing that whole that whole routine. So I'm excited. Oh, yeah. It should be a f- fun season. We are going to talk a little bit of strategy. I kind of have a, a present yeah. for you in a way. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited have, to learn some. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have James on Virgilio. Oh, the Gator, the Gator podcast. Oh, yeah. What's that? Gator Nation football yeah. podcast. Yeah, he's a great guest for that. Yeah, dude. And so we'll talk a little bit about podcasting, a little bit about Gator football, a little bit of finance stuff. It'll be fun. Oh, so, I, need to, I need to learn more so it's coming. That. It's right after you, man. <laughs> he's right after you. So it'll, it'll be good. And I, I feel like the timing is just right because we're kind of, you know, getting into football season. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're going to talk a little, just... I won't scare all, the, all like everybody away who listens to our podcast and isn't football fans, but like, I mean, we're Gators and we're going to talk a little bit of football. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it'll be, it'll be fun. So it, our, our people have, uh, our, our, uh, audience out there has something to look forward to if you, uh, are, are Gator lover. And it was fun cause we had a mod black on the show at one point and James you know, Bates, James right? Bates yeah. at one point. So that's, that's good. When's Tebow coming on? Dude, whenever he's in town, man, he's, he's welcome anytime. He knows this. You know, T, Tim, uh, we serviced a scooter one time. I'll never forget. It. <laughs> I'll never forget it. But uh, it was it was cool because he had uh, he had bought a used scooter from somebody. I think, right? Mm-hmm. Was it Kimco or something? Yeah, I think so. Kim, and so we had, we had service him one time. So I, I met him I when, when he like brought it into the dealership. I love how you of the scooter. You know exactly what's wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember when it, came, when it came to the store because one time it, it came in and his friend was bringing it in or something, or something. And I'm like, I'm like, who's, you know, I'm like, okay, can I get some information? He's like, oh, it's not my scooter. I'll have the owner call you. I'm like, you just can't drop off a scooter here yeah. and, and leave. I need to know who it belongs right. to. And he's like, he goes, dude, he goes, it, it belongs to Tim, Tim Tebow, like, he's out of town this weekend he'll give you a call and i was like okay (laughs) so we ended up fixing him fixing it and he ended up coming to the shop to pick it up and it was like first thing in the morning when he came to pick it up and he there we had a handful of customers in the showroom and he was just the most down to earth like super nice guy took pictures with everybody signed autographs i mean it was was really cool yeah he definitely lives up to to the hype and in terms of his character oh yeah i mean he's just spot on but but yeah man well, hey, you have seen our show. You know our format a little bit. Like we like to take it back a little bit, throw it back. I want to hear your story. You know, this is what's so great, and I've and I've said this multiple times, is that, you know, I've had a lot of friends on the podcast. You and I are friends, and you know, like 
as many times as we've gone out to dinner or had drinks, like I've never really dove into really? your into your story. Like not like way back okay. into like, you know what. Well, I, like I know that you bought the other moving company, or did you bought two College Brothers, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. you had another movie, yeah. moving. So like I know like little bits and pieces, but I don't sure. even really know like why you got into the moving business. Sure, you sure. know what I mean. So so take us back and uh, and we'll go from there, man. Give us your story. Yeah. So I, I like to I like to like really like we're gonna take it way back to like my developmental years. Yeah. Uh, it's because my parents were joggers, right? So they would go jogging and they'd run in through different neighborhoods hoods and they'd go through all different parts of town and they developed this uh, addiction, whether it's healthy or unhealthy, to um, real estate and buying new houses and making us move every two years. So they'd see, they'd go through, jogging through these neighborhoods, be like, oh, this is such a pretty neighborhood. Look, there's a house for sale. Like, let's let's just take a look at it. And they'd fall in love with that house and they'd come home and they'd say, oh, wait, wait, Brett, we're, we're moving. So we, you know, we saw all the different moving companies come and go and then we'd have to all obviously pack up our own stuff and bring over, you know, run shuttle runs with U-Haul trucks back and forth with my rollerblades and my baseball bats and everything else. And, uh, you know, that was real young. And then as we got older, they, you know, kept doing this where we would move like every two years and they're still doing it like they're you know now that we're out of a house but um you know they'd ha start to hire us my friends and stuff they'd save a couple bucks and get a u-haul and pay my friends and i you know 10 12 15 bucks an hour to help them help them move so you know that's kind of where it like all goes back to and I, I hated every minute of it like I didn't want anything to do with this and, and they would joke like wouldn't it be so funny if one day Wade owned a moving company and I'm like no no that would be <laughs> terrible this is the worst so uh, anyway fast forward a few years um, I uh, I had the opportunity to play baseball my freshman year of college um, at a out-of-state private school and I had a, a partial scholarship up there but it was still very expensive private school in North Carolina uh, ended up getting hurt um, not like to the point where I couldn't like you know, do anything, but it set me back like eight weeks and I didn't get the playing time I wanted in the spring. And it just, it was a tiny little school and I'd always grown up a Gator fan. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I want to go back to Gainesville. Like, you know, or not back to Gainesville, but I want to, I want to transfer to university of Florida. So, uh, after playing a year up there, I came, uh, back down here and I spent the summer where I'm from in the Sarasota area. And it was, this was like 2009, and I, I needed a summer job and I had applied to like 30 different places. At least it felt like 30 different places. And this is like the peak of the recession. And, you know, I was applying to be like a server at places with no real like experience except for, you know, maybe delivering pizzas or something in high school. And I was competing against people with like college degrees for like those same positions. And I didn't, you know, really have much experience. Like they knew I was only there for a couple months in the summertime. Summertime is slow in Sarasota for a lot of, you know, places because uh, it's, it's more of like a snowbird type of a community. Uh, so I was having a lot of hard, I was having a hard time getting a job. And um, my dad was like, well, you know, I got a friend that works over at JC Penney's in the mall. Like I can get you this job, um, you know, but it's going to be full time. You're going to have to be indoors the entire summer, Monday through Friday and wear long pants to work. And I'm like, I hate wearing long pants. So I was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to do that. So like whatever I can have, whatever I can find that's not working at JC Penney's this summer, n nothing against JC Penney's, but but like, I didn't want to do that. So I started posting ads on Craigslist and uh, I basically was just like, I'm a young college athlete looking for any kind of general labor, like mowing lawns, you know, physical stuff. So I started getting all these like little odd jobs. I was helping out like a handyman and a carpet cleaner and I was mowing yards until my lawnmower broke and I realized how much that sucked. And so, <laughs> but then I started getting a lot of calls to like help people load and unload U-Haul trucks because again, this is like the recession. People are downsizing. They're not spending money, you know, high hiring moving companies, the moving company, the moving industry as a whole, I didn't know this at the time, but it's starting to transition because, you know, you've got the emergence of the internet and you, and you're losing the yellow pages. And that used to be like the number one driver of new business for moving companies was the yellow pages. I mean, there were entire massive companies that would sprout up overnight that would, you know, go from zero to millions in revenue because they just take out a $10,000 a month ad in the yellow pages. And, and that was starting to go away. So there was this whole like shift in the industry that, you know, looking back on it, talking to all these other moving companies now on my, on my podcast, uh, I'm, I'm learning, but I didn't know that at the time. So I started getting all these calls from the internet and like, I, I made more money that summer just helping people load and unload U-Haul trucks than I would have made anywhere else, JC Penney's or Starbucks or wherever I would have, you know, elsewise got a job. So, and I actually enjoyed it. Like a lot of time I'd meet all these new people. I'd see all these different job sites every single day. 
and um, you know they'd usually pit by by lunch for me or dinner for me depending on what time of the day it was and I, I, st- I still go back to Sarasota and I'm like oh yeah I moved somebody in that sky rise uh, high rise I moved somebody over here like I, I learned it was just fun I just enjoyed it and I could pick my own hours like if people would call me and they'd say hey like you know are you available on Friday I'm like oh no there's a big party on Friday at the beach I want to go do that no I'm booked so like I can do Saturday though so um, it was really cool to be able to like, like have that flexible schedule and I got the wheels turning in my head like how could I like make this a, like a bigger thing like I don't want to own like a moving company but like I kind of enjoy doing this work like it's hard work but but it's fun like it's rewarding it's a good workout I'm making good money doing this it's flexible like how could I make you know more people do it so I was like oh well, whatever so I, I come back to Gainesville and I kind of try to do the same thing up here and I'm hiring out my friends and like I didn't really <laughs> understand like the the business of it. I didn't think people wanted to pay more than $15 an hour per person to have people move their stuff. Um, so I would just be like, uh, you know, you have an extra person, I bring them on for 12 an hour, make, you know, an extra $3 on them. Um, I didn't really have any overhead or anything like that. So, you know, just working with my friends, we're doing the same thing up in Gainesville, um, kind of did some freelance stuff for some other moving companies here in town. Uh, and then it finally came time to graduate. And I was like, well, what the heck am I going to do now? And I'd kind of tried to like start this little moving company idea. I was having trouble getting like insurance and stuff like that as a 20, 21 year old kid. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Like, I need to take like a year out. I know I want to go into business. I know I want to start a business. My degree was in telecommunications. Um, so like that was to be a TV reporter or something like that. And, and, you know, it was fun, but like it wasn't something I saw myself really doing as a career. So I applied for the entrepreneurship program at University of Florida. And part of that program, we had to start a business. And it was kind of almost like a thesis of the program at the time. So I was like, well, you know, like what kind of a business am I going to start? Like, I don't have any money. Like, you know, how am I going to do this? So like, let me revisit this moving company thing. And cause that was kind of the job that I had at the time still just making extra money on the side, like, you know, the college student, you know, branding thing. So right around the same time that this was June, 2012, I was like, okay, I'm going to like go all into this like moving company thing and like get a license, get insurance. Like all I had was a pickup truck, but I can go rent trucks if I need to. I'm going to got all this whole network of like my fraternity brothers that'll come and help me out with this stuff. They were already like working with me, you know, for some of these other moving companies or some of the freelance stuff that I was doing on the side. And so we launched Smarter Moving Solutions in 2012, like right when I started the entrepreneurship master's program at UF. And so for that whole year, I learned like the real like business, like how to like run a real business. You know, we had classes in business law and sales and marketing and finance and accounting. Like I'd never taken an accounting class up to that point. So I didn't know, you know, what a cash ledger was, you know, I didn't know anything. So, uh, so anyway, so we're running that business, um, for about a year. And I actually, what also kind of spurred me into launching this is I, I saw a two college brothers truck pull up at the stoplight here on 13th and University. University. It's like, damn, like that was my idea that I had when I was like on the backs of these trucks, like these two, these college guys are starting this whole thing. And it was like the original two college brothers, Kevin and Brian. And I was like, man, like, that's exactly what I like kind of visualized in my head, but couldn't quite put together. And it's basically what spurred me into starting Smarter Moving Solutions with the Entrepreneurship Master's Program. Do you guys following right now? Am I, yep. am I like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, no, so, <laughs> so for that whole next year, I focused like on growing this this bit, this moving company, Smarter Moving Solutions. I was hiring my my fraternity brothers, and my friends, and my actual little brother, and, and this and that. And so, so basically, t- we competed against two college brothers for two summers. They were, I considered them my biggest competition. I kept one of their flyers on my desk as like inspiration because I thought they had built this amazing brand. Um, you know, they were t- they were like trying to expand to Tallahassee and Orlando and do all this stuff. I'm like, man, like this is possible. Like open my eyes to like see what the the possibilities were with this business. And we were basically, they were like our arch rival at the time. And I didn't know Kevin or Brian, but I knew that, you know, they built this really cool brand. So fast forward to busy season. So the summertime is our busy season. So we had started in June of 2012. So we competed that summer and then we competed the summer of 2013. And then all of a sudden I get a call. I'm like talking with one of my, my right hand guy. 
how can we like expand to Tallahassee like how they've done? Like they, there must be a way to do this. And as we're like sitting there in this meeting with the two college brothers flyer on my desk, I get a call from Kevin. It's like, hey man, it's Kevin from two college brothers. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I've never actually spoken to you, but how's <laughs> yeah. it going? Uh, he's like, yeah, man, like we're, we're trying to go pursue some other opportunities. Like we want to sell the business. I'm like, huh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll meet with you. I, I don't know, you know, anything about buying a business or anything like that, but I'd be happy to sit down with you. So I remember, I remember this, this whole meeting, like I brought like one of my friends who was like in finance and I was like, I, you know, come help me like, look at the numbers. Like, you know, we were like getting way over the top into this whole like process, even though it wasn't that big of a deal looking back on it. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's we, always a big deal in yeah, that moment. Yeah. I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm going to buy a company. Yeah. Like, I'm buying my competition. Yeah. We're going to dominate the market. <laughs> ah. It's like this, this Brad Pitt, like, you know, money ball like situation with, uh, what, what's the other guy's name with the curly hair? Anyway, yeah. yeah. So like we're like walking into this whole thing and we're at the Santa Fe seed and you know, we're sitting down like looking through like the manuals, like looking over the numbers, like circling things, like acting all, all official and stuff like that. And like I did, I like looking back, like there were so many things I should have like looked for and like, anyway, so hindsight's 2020. <laughs> and so we're like, you know, like, what are you asking for this? They gave us, you know, this price and we were just like, there's no way like that's, I don't have that kind of money. Like, what are you talking about? So I basically was like, all right, well, what, what could I like scrounge up if I had to? And so I basically made him an offer for a third of the asking price, just to throw it out there. And they're like, no, like we really need to get closer to this. They can't counter offer it. I was like, no, like this is like my top dollar offer. Like I'm not, I didn't, I'm not able to negotiate like anything more than this. If I even had it, I could pump into my own company. Uh, so they're like, all right, whatever. A couple of weeks go by and I just get an email from, it was Kevin or Brian and they were just like, yeah, we'd like to accept, accept your offer. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I just bought a company. <laughs> so, and this was like, so my, did you have that money? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Um, I had borrowed it. You're not going to tell us how much it was? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's worth that. Worth the shot. Yeah, like, ask no. You, you don't have to. I, you like. know, I, I thought about that. I just out of respect for Kevin and Brian. It's I don't, fine, I don't it's know fine. if I. I love Kevin I and Brian too. They're, they're yeah. really, really good guys. Yeah, no. It was, and Kevin was, is, he, is he in New York now? I think. Uh, I don't know where Brian. I think Brian's he got involved at, with a startup. I follow him on Instagram. Okay. Um, I think he's involved with like a, a shoe company startup or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I don't. Okay. I, he, he traveled a lot. Like I know he he went on like this whole like Odyssey like travel world. Of course, you paid him all that money for his business. He went like. Not from what I've heard, I'll tell you. Unless he invested it. I'm just trying to feel this out a little bit. All right, so... So, no. so you didn't have the money. Right, so, did. I, so I didn't have the money, but okay. if there's one thing my entrepreneurship program taught me, it's like, that's like the least of your concern. Like, the money's always there. You just gotta know how to find it or how to raise it or how to, you know, how to get it. So... You know, I put in, uh, you know, I was kind of talking the situation over with a few family members. This kind of goes back to, was it last week? Where you just you just do it, yeah. right? I was talking about the Anheuser Busch deal, right? Just yeah, like you just say you just say yes, yeah, and like then you figure it out exactly, and, right. I, and that's that's exactly that's what, a, such a good entrepreneurial lesson. Yeah, just say yes, yeah. and then go figure it out exactly, and that's exactly what what I did, and I was able to to raise the money that I needed to to buy the business. Uh, basically, just took, took out a loan from a family member and okay. we able to pay it all back. It was like a little like a three year note, I think, and um, yeah. So basically, we yeah got the money and basically you know gave did the, did the deal and we got uh, essentially access to use the name and the brand and everything like that. We got the manuals that they had at the time. Um, they kind of had a location in Tallahassee and Orlando, which I pursued for like six months trying to like get those up and running, but there weren't like any real hard assets in either of those locations. So like we ended up just saying, okay, no, like let's, let's scrap all this other, you know, these other locations, distractions, like it's still something I want to do but not right now. Like we don't, we're not ready to do that right now. Like let's focus on Gainesville. Let's grow Gainesville as big as we can get it. And then once we're ready to do it right, we'll open a second location. So. Okay. Quick question. Yeah. Do they have any like, like, um, assets or like, you know, you said that manuals and stuff, was there anything like processes or anything that, yeah. that you purchased that, you, you know, in that where you were just like, Oh wow, this is, this is really awesome. Oh yeah. It was fascinating. Yeah. yeah like, they had, I, like a bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Up until that time, like I was just kind of trying to figure everything out on my own and I didn't, I don't think I actually had any kind of my own manuals or anything at that point. Um, you know, very little branding, consistent branding on, on my end. And, and that's really like essentially what I was buying into was, 
they had a, an excellent brand and an excellent consistency with that brand. At least I thought so. And then, you so know, was there any thought to keeping keeping Smarter Moving Solutions as yeah, the name? Yeah, or? there was, and we we kind of ran them side by side for a little while. Uh, we were thinking maybe Smarter Moving Solutions could be like our our commercial and residential thing, and Two College Brothers could be our student thing. Um, and so there was a lot of back and forth on that. I mean, because Smarter Moving Solutions was was my baby. Like that was what I created. Like. Yeah. And, you know, I eventually came to the decision, like, I'm splitting resources across two totally different names, two totally different brands. Like, we need two sets of uniforms, two business cards, two flyers, two trucks. Like, and I was like, That's, it's just not going to make any sense. Like, we need to, we need to like, focus on one. And so I, I was like, Two College Brothers is, like, the the brand to focus on like that. That's the most scalable brand, I think. So, um, it took a lot of like, it took a lot to like swallow the pride of like mm. change, like not using the name that I had come up with. Um, but that's still like our LLC. So like it's, it's two, it's smarter moving solutions, LLC, and then DBA two college brothers. Like okay. that's still how we, how we operate. So, um, so what year did you buy them? This was 2013. Okay. So this is like a year later. Cause didn't you say you started the company in 2012? Yeah, it was, a year, it was a year later. It felt like two because it was like two busy seasons later. Okay. So busy season is like really where, you know, you, you make a, a big chunk of your money for the, as you know, I mean, you have a seasonal mm. business oh, yeah. too. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it felt like two, but I guess technically it was only one. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we, we bought that brand and it, once I had like a brand I could rally behind, is when things really started to, to take off. And they had also been in business a couple of years longer than I had. So like they had a little bit more of like a customer base and stuff like that. Did they have team members that you transitioned over or um, how did that work? A couple of movers, but no like, uh, like no management or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, so I, I basically had to bring all of that over myself. So it started off being uh, a couple of my key movers. We promoted to basically help with, you know, answering phones. We had the phones like routed to their cell phones and then um, they would help with like getting trucks out or, or helping with whatever needed to be done. Did they have trucks that they owned? They had one truck. Yeah. Okay. One truck and then a bunch of equipment. And then I had a truck and a trailer. So a pickup truck and like a, like a box trailer at the time. So which was, oh, that's, that was a whole other nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to teach college kids how to drive a trailer, that was, so. <laughs> Hey, we do it too. We yeah, know. yeah, we sold that luckily, thing. Luckily, but, Dante's been here a long time, right. so yeah. he's uh, been pulling that truck and trailer. Yeah, I mean, if you know how to do it, it's not that hard, but but if you don't know how to do it, it it's yeah. not easy. So w one example, when we were driving the truck and the trailer, I sent a couple guys out to the Bartram apartments, and they decided to try to take it into the parking garage, oh, and it cost $16,000, the damage on the gate that, that is no. at the park right there. So I was Oh my gosh. Yeah. And plus a bunch of damage to the to the trailer itself. So that was that was one of the nightmares of the trailer. But um anyway, I think that was about the worst of it. But yeah. So so we we rally behind this brand two college brothers that I had looked up to for for almost two a well, year and a half and well I guess almost two years if you consider the time before I actually started my company and uh, you know we start you know growing in Gainesville like the summer of 2014 was kind of like our breakout year in Gainesville I had one of my fraternity brothers come on as like my my full general manager and we were already starting to talk about like opening other locations we almost pulled the trigger on like trying to do a location in South Florida like West Palm Beach because we had some like real estate you know we had some friends who were doing real estate down there that we went to school with um, and we're like, oh, this was gonna be like a great like lead source right off the bat like there's a lot of real estate a lot of big money down there. I'm so glad we did not open a location in South Florida because that market is so saturated with moving companies. It's ridiculous. And it's, there's a lot of shady companies down there and it was four hours away from Gainesville. So it would have been really hard logistically to get back and forth. Um, so we didn't do that. We didn't end up going to South Florida. Um, we just decided to stay in Gainesville for another year and see what happened. And about that time, uh, going into 2015, a few of my old fraternity brothers were getting together and forming a little investment group. Um, and they were like flipping houses basically. And they're like, Hey, like, what would you think about like us investing in two college brothers to help you like 
fuel some growth. And I was like, oh, well, maybe, I mean, you know, so we talked about it and like, these were all guys that I went to school with who were all in the same fraternity and um, ended up working out a deal with them to where they bought into the two college brothers brand, which help, uh, helped us open our Tampa location in 2015. So basically it's 70, 30 split and I've got 70, they've got 30. Uh, and then they split it up amongst four of them. Um, so that, and we all work together. We're all, you know, I was golfing with them last weekend. Like we're still, we're all in very good terms. Um, and it's, um, it's been, you know, it's been a, f- a fun partnership because they're mostly located down in Tampa and it helped us open the Tampa location. And one of them was kind of our first manager down in Tampa, like part of that group. So it helped us have somebody that we could trust, like running that branch of the business like originally. So basically we spent that we opened the Tampa location in September of 2015. And, um, shortly after that, we won the, uh, uh, what was it? The Chamber of Commerce um, Best Overall Small Business of the Year Award here in Gainesville in 2016, and uh, we've you know won the the Gainesville Sun People's Choice Awards the last three years here in Gainesville, and, and Gainesville is continuing to grow. Tampa was a very challenging place to grow for the first three years. Like we, is it just because it's so big? <sighs> like why? I think just a lot of competition. It was hard to break through the noise. I mean, there's, there's over 80 moving companies in Tampa and, and a lot of them have been around for 50, 60, 80 years, you know, since, I mean, Tampa's an old city. So, um, it was just hard to break through the noise and, and we struggled. We, we've, thought many times of closing down the Tampa location. And I was like, no, like, I think we can do this. Like, I I just had this, like, it's like relentless, like, like, let's just, let's just, you know, try this down there. Let's try that down there. And, and it wasn't until about last October that that is like a switch flipped in Tampa. And, and, you know, I don't know if it was, we started ranking better on Google or we started to find some like marketing sources that work, but like, now Tampa's rocking and rolling and we had a couple months this slow season where Tampa actually did more sales than Gainesville for the first time. Mm. Um, and Gainesville has been wow. growing month over month, you know, in itself. So it, it was a really, it's a really good sign. And, and I'm really excited about that. So as Tampa's started to grow a lot more, I've started to spend a lot more time down there. My girlfriend lives down there. So like I've been, I've got property in Gainesville. I, we, we rent an apartment down there. So I go back and forth a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an exciting time because we're, we're seeing record months almost every single month across the company in both Gainesville and Tampa. And I ultimately see Tampa being being our biggest market out of the two, um, just because the population down there is sure. 10, 10 X what it is up here. But, but I will say this Gainesville is a very good town to do business in because we've got the word of mouth aspect in Gainesville. Like it's just such a more tight knit community in that I've been able to tell at least to this point. Um, and there is less competition as of right now. I shouldn't say that too loudly, I guess. If there's <laughs> prospective companies looking to come I, mean, I forgot to tell you this, but we just started a moving right. company last yeah, week. Right. <laughs> We're coming after you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we, in Tampa, you have to charge less and pay guys more. I mean, because the cost of living is mm-hmm. higher. So, like, you can't get guys to show up to the interview for less than 15 bucks an hour. At least I haven't, you know, figured out how to do that. Um, and then, you know, there's so much competition down there. I mean, people hang up the phone as soon as we just try to give them, like, what our, our normal off-season rate in Gainesville normally is. Like, we try to tell them, you know, that rate in Tampa. And they're like, oh, I found somebody for 30 bucks an hour cheaper and they'll throw in a third guy. And it's like like how, like how, how, like how you can't make money that way. So, you know, it's, it's still a little bit of a challenge in that regard from a, an operation standpoint, but, um, but it's starting to get a lot of traction. We're starting to find more profitable revenues that aren't just like hourly weight based jobs, which is how we do a lot of our jobs here in Gainesville. Like we're doing a lot more like larger moves down there that are like flat rate based. So it's just, it's just totally different, different clientele. You know, everybody pays with a credit card down there. People in Gainesville might give us, you know, pay more with checks or cash, kind of the old school way. Um, we're getting like, we've got kind of this excellent like pipeline from the university of, of getting good, um, college students to come in, uh, down there. We've, we've had a lot of trouble like tapping into like the universities, uh, to hire college kids. I mean, we're, we're still able to get them, but it's, 
they're not they're not like Gators, you know. They're not like yeah. the University of Florida guys that we get. You know, nothing nothing against. I mean, we got some great guys down there. Don't get me wrong, but it's 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 a lot harder. Like the Greek life down there isn't as big, and that's like a big source of how we get a lot of our movers up here is from the fraternities. So it's there's there's a lot of different challenges in Tampa. I still think it has the potential to be you know 10x, and like I said, the last 10 months have been been really good for us down there. Um, but but Gainesville is a special place, and it's like I wonder when we go to you know expand again or if we saw our first franchise or something if we want to try to find a market like Gainesville instead of a big city like yeah. Tampa I mean I'm actually kind of surprised that you didn't do that a lot of people, you know what I mean a lot of people tell me that yeah it's, and maybe it's just because I think you might be able to plug in you know a name like two college brothers in another like college for me it seemed like it'd be a good way to plug it into a college town and make that relationship there I guess yeah and but, and, and that that could very well be true. Um, part of the reason we wanted to go to a big city was because I guess we had kind of known it was going to be different. Uh, but also, I mean, every big city has a lot of different colleges in it. You right. Know, it may not be sure. considered a college town, but I mean, you look at any large metropolitan area and there's, you know, even if they're community colleges or private schools or whatever, I mean, they're, they're all there are still a lot of, so we can still make the model work and the populations are a lot bigger. And we, and I studied a lot of other collegiate themed and, and just moving companies in general. And the high population big cities are, are the places that they try to expand their, their, their self franchises to. I mean, there's one competitor that we have that's another collegiate themed moving and junk removal company that they'll only offer franchise territories and populations over 400,000 people. So I'm like, well, there must be a reason they're doing that. I mean, Alachua County is like, what, 200, 250,000 people? I mean, Gainesville proper is is like 100,000 people, you know, not counting maybe some of the students. But, um, you know, it's interesting, though, because like in this small community, you, you don't get as much competition and you can charge, you know, more profitable rates and, and you can get a better pipeline of, of good movers and you you know there's a lot more word of mouth so people talk and it's easier to grow when you do a good job so yeah it's interesting because you know i i I love to compare businesses that are completely unrelated like i like look at our business and and try to think of it you know try to compare it to a business like yours and i definitely think you know we've we've talked about expanding multiple times and looked at other looked at other college towns right and and i think that that model is perfect for us, you know, if we were if we were going to expand to a, another town, it would be another college town mm-hmm. where it's like super tight. It's like, you know, Gainesville exists because of the University of Florida. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? It's like if people have asked, well, have you thought about Orlando? Have you thought? I'm like, well, like I just feel like, you know, they don't necessarily have the same issues, or it's really what are really spread out. Um, they don't when I say same issues, like same parking issues. Um, you know, so I think that's why I like something like a, you know, I don't know any any other college town would, where the, where the town is really built around the university, would make a lot of sense for us. Um, but you know, every time we got close, <laughs> this is the thing. Like every time we got close, you know, we'd sit down, we'd look at the numbers, and and our, our biggest thing, like one of like one of our biggest competitors, you know, he's got like four four locations, four. like four locations, and. I was able to go pull the reports, you know, through the through the tag office because we can, you know, you can see how many vehicles mm-hmm. are being registered. I'm like, look, I'm like, I'm looking at Mike. I'm like, dude, we're selling more scooters from this one location than yeah. he is in all four of his. Yeah. Like, why? Like, we should definitely maximize. Yeah. This, like, Did, max max this out <laughs> before, yeah. before we make that move because we just kept selling more and more and more and more scooters from this one location. I'm like, dude, this is just proof that people are like coming here even from other places even from outside of town to get their scooter from us and i'm like i'm just gonna keep focused on this on this one area until i know it's like max out and then i'll consider looking at other places and and i agree with that that strategy i mean looking back on it i guess i thought we were reaching like that that limit of being able to dive deep into gainesville and, and that and we wanted to you know be able to have another location but there's a lot of value in just digging as deep as you can into one market instead of trying to spread yourself out over multiple markets. And for that reason, I don't plan to open any more corporately owned locations. Um, you know, you, you introduced us as we want to expand nationwide, and that's true. But I want to sell 
franchises really? to where okay. we have an owner operator running and becoming that hometown hero wherever they buy their franchise so that they can dig as deep as they can into their roots. And I see this happen with a lot of uh, other moving companies that I'm networked with where they try to open up all these different locations because it sounds awesome to say you have six locations, but you know all the locations combined may not be doing as well as if they were to just dive super deep into one. And I think that there's still a great way to grow and leverage na- na- leverage nationwide growth. But I think you have to have an owner operator who wants to be a hometown hero, who wants to have that, that, I call it grocery store recognition, where you walk into the grocery store and you can keep your head high and people are like, oh, there's that, mo-, you know, the, the guy who owns the moving company. Oh, he moved us, thank you so much, like type of a thing. Um, because, I mean, a lot of, people love that you know they like to be their hometown hero and be the go-to guy for this service or or gal for this service and and that's what we want to pitch to our prospective franchisees when we when we start to sell that those well then like you know it's interesting because i mean this is a perfect example as to why you should let the goals kind of determine the path right because the You'd say, oh, well, maybe maybe I wouldn't have done gone to Tampa so soon, or maybe I wouldn't have done these things. But but the truth is, like, if you're looking to franchise, I mean, we've like I've looked into that, you know, and doing and doing a similar model. And anybody who sets up franchises will tell you, well, you kind of need to have two or three proven locations, sure. yeah. before you do that, yeah. So and that, that's I mean, what it people... sounds like you're, you're definitely on the right path, setting up, you know, another another location and yeah and figuring out the that's, model. that's what we were told too and i you know I, I look back on it and i'm like you know i would have considered a lot more if i knew what i know now before opening a location in tampa but at the same time i am glad that i did it i don't regret opening that location because at this point it's starting to do very well and I've learned a ton. I like what worked in Gainesville to like generate business did not work in Tampa, but I've also, it's forced me to learn new things that I can now generate business with in Tampa that I can bring to Gainesville and it also works in Gainesville, but yeah. I would have never learned that it worked in Gainesville had I just been doing it the way I was comfortable doing it in Gainesville. So like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I've, I've it's helped me learn a, a ton since I've been down there. Yeah, it's super interesting. Talk to me a little bit about the, um, you know, the, the fact that we both employ college students, mm. <laughs> <laughs> because this is something that oh hasn't. This is, <laughs> I mean, this is something that that I, we haven't talked a lot about a lot on the podcast. But you know, the truth is, we're in a college town, yeah. And I think there's definitely good opportunities. One for college students, and and like I've talked about multiple times about the fact that I want this podcast to help us retain a lot of our you know, talent coming out of the University of Florida, um, you know, but like while they're in school, you know, it's a good opportunity for them to get out, work for a local business like yours. Talk to me a little bit about like the challenges in that. Cause I just want to, I want to see if they're the same the challenges we deal with Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and you know, maybe some of the cultural aspects that, that come with that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it is, it's, it's a double edged sword. So it can be, it can be the you can find the greatest people in the world that are that are willing to work for you know twelve to to eighteen dollars, or you can you know have the biggest headaches in the world that you may not otherwise you know have if you are focusing on just hiring the regular like you know regular non college student people, normal people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I, I mean it's. We, how, how many how many people do you employ right now? Right now we've got a we, well in Gainesville we've got around fifty, and then right now in Tampa we've got around twenty. But but it's there's a lot more a lot of part time a lot more part time people in Gainesville, and a lot more guys that are looking for full time work in Tampa. Okay, so of the fifty, how many are college students roughly? Um, in game, I mean, pretty much everybody. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there might be a few guys that are taking some time off to work or, or something like that. I mean, everybody's, you know, a lot of guys are just taking the summer off right now because it's summer and they just want to work, you know, before football season. But, um, yeah, I think, I think everybody, well, oh, okay. I can think of a couple guys that a couple of our full-time crew that this is like their full-time job. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess not everybody, but I mean, the majority, I mean, 90% of them right okay. now are, are college students or graduates. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, we've gone back and forth. I mean, there was a period a couple of years ago where we tried to hire a bunch of, uh, I was just getting so fed up with all the college 
you know, just BS that I was dealing with, you know, showing up hungover and like pulling teeth to get them to, to pick up jobs and work and this and that. And, or just no call, no showing oversleeping, like just all like the stupid, stupid things. And so we're like, all right, let's just start hiring like more like, you know, normal mover type people. And that came with an entirely new set of problems that I do not want to deal with at all. You know, you've got all the, you know, at least in the moving industry, the people that were drawn to that, that type of work that, you know, when we were trying to kind of get away from the college student model for a little bit, it was just like baby mama drama. And now we have to know how to like, you know, do all this, you know, child support and, Oh, you have to leave at three o'clock because they forgot to tell us they got to go pick up their kid. Like not that there's anything wrong with like having kids, but like the, it was just like this, I don't know. I don't want to like say the wrong thing here, politically incorrect, but it was just like a, a class of person that was not a future doctor and lawyer and they didn't take as much pride in their, their work. And like, mm-hmm. it just wasn't that like clean cut image that we strive for. So it's like, all right, scrap it. We're going back to, you know, the model. We just need to, to fine tune this model of like finding these future doctors and lawyers and like college students that, you know, yeah, they might like to party and we can embrace that and like embrace the flexibility of that. But we also have to draw the line and say, if you do this, it's not going to work. So I, over the last two years or so, we've we've started to dial in and, and we've got a really good group of guys that, um, you know, there's still the hiccups. I mean, doesn't matter if you're in college or not. In a, in a role like that, like as a mover, there's still people that are gonna, you know, show up hungover and that sort of a thing. And you, we just have to have systems in place to send them home or have a backup person scheduled or whatever needs to be done to to basically mitigate that those problems as much as possible. How, so, How much training is involved? Is it more like just, hey, pick that box up and move it over there, or do you actually have to train your employees? We actually train them. So we've got, uh, actually Colin helped us make a bunch of YouTube videos uh, last year. Uh, nice, but, but yeah, we put everybody through an orientation yeah, yeah. that we hire. Uh, we've got uh, the manuals, you know, they, they've they changed a lot since we inherited them from Kevin and Brian, but, um, but we've, yeah, I mean, we're always fine tuning the manuals and, and like, so everybody gets a copy of our, our, our or moving operating manual, mm-hmm. um, they all go through a, an orientation, and then we schedule them uh, f- with with our, our top core group of guys. So we've got a core group of guys that are are basically our, our go to team. So anytime we have like a VIP move or uh, are training new guys, they're we call them crew chiefs. Um, they basically are, are assigned to work with that that crew. And we'll, we'll typically put new guys. We'll try to put them on smaller jobs at first until we kind of get a handle on, you know, how they are. And, uh, you know, once they kind of demonstrate that they prove themselves, uh, we can put them on one of two tracks. So we've got a full ride program and we've got a walk on program. Our walk on program is perfect for the part time college kid who just wants to make some extra spending money to get through college. The full ride program is a handpicked um, program where, where basically you're selected based off of, um, you know, either prior moving experience. If we get, if you recruit you from somewhere, or if you come, if you just moved into Gainesville and you've got 10 years working with Atlas fan lines, you'll kind of get fast tracked onto that full ride program. Um, or if you go out and work your first, you know, 10, 15, 20 jobs and you're just lights out, like everybody loves working with you. Customers are giving you great feedback. We'll say, Hey, like if you have the availability, we'd like you to do this full ride program. So it's higher paying more opportunities. And that's kind of our, our core group, our crew chiefs are typically part of that full ride program. And then we've got the walk on program, which is basically ideal for, you know, the guy who wants to go to Gator games on the weekends. And they, they basically the part time guys that fill in the gaps when we get really busy because in the moving business, everybody seems to want to move at the exact same time. You know, it's sure. all in the Leases weekends. all in at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, end of the month, in the middle of the summer, on the weekends, like there's these rush periods where the all, we, like you kind of have to have a pool of part-time guys to fill in the gaps to, you know, help out. So when, when we're training these guys, we're putting new guys with the full ride guys or the crew chiefs that, you know, even if a crew chief a walk on guy could be a crew chief just with more experience, they've been with us longer. So that's, I mean, that's really the best way that I've found to train people is just to give them that hands-on experience. I mean, I've tried, you know, we show them all the videos, we do the orientation, we might move stuff around the office and just kind of show them how it's done. But like, you really don't know how it's done until you're out there doing it. Mm-hmm. And that that's the fastest okay, way. So what kind of accountability measures do you have within this training, within the training stuff? Because 
Um, I mean, I'm not putting up with people showing up hungover. So. Right. No, <laughs> so like yeah. when that, when that kind of circling back to like when that happens, I mean, mm-hmm. what do you guys, what do you guys do? How do you handle it? So we've got a system called brother bucks and you and I've spoken a little bit about this in the past and we fine tuned it a little bit since then. Okay. Um, but basically you get a dollar per hour for every or brother buck per hour of, for every hour that you work. If you have an unhappy customer, if you have a damage claim, if you show up late or no call, no show or get sent home, you lose 20. So that has gone a long way in increasing morale. Um, another thing too, is just like a no tolerance thing. I mean, if I, if, if you show up to work smelling like, you know, booze or, or something else that, you know, you shouldn't be smelling like when you're showing up to work, I'll, I'll send you home or whoever are managing, whoever's managing that day or dispatching that day, will send you home and we schedule backups. I mean, we'll schedule one backup for every five, people that we have working that day to come in so that we have the option to basically send somebody home if we need to. And then if, if we have too many people that day, we'll either have that guy, put that guy to work around the warehouse or the office. If there's an extra that shows up and everybody's good to go otherwise, um, or maybe we'll still send them out if it's a big job and, you know, we'll say, okay, we'll just go and help them out. Um, or, you know, we'll say, hang out at the office for a couple hours in case we pick up a last minute job and we'll send you out. And we've got like TVs and Netflix and stuff where people can just Netflix and chill in the, in the office and whatnot. But, um, yeah. But does that create the, I mean, does somebody, you know, here I am like, Oh, like I'm, I'm on your team members and like, Oh, well I know that they have a backup. So like, I'll just, it can, I mean, we just, it's just continually reinforcing things a lot of times with, with a lot of these guys. I mean, if, if you start to let things slip and get sloppy, then that sort of thing can happen if, if you, you know, don't take the backup role seriously. But if the backup doesn't show up, he gets, you know, docked brother bucks, just like if somebody who is actually scheduled for the move, you know, didn't show up. Hmm. Um, when we get really busy, sometimes we'll schedule mock jobs on our calendar to where people come in thinking that they're going to go out on a job and then they're, you know, to encourage them to make sure that we have more than enough people showing up to come into work. And then if something happens, if somebody's late, if somebody doesn't show up, if, you know, somebody books last minute, we've got people there to work or, you know, a lot of times we just have stuff to do around the warehouse as well on those days. Okay. So we got to wrap up in just a little bit, but why don't you like, tell me a little bit about your podcast. Yeah. Because I'm super interested. Uh, I was, I got to be on his podcast <laughs> at one point, which is really cool. Um, but it's, I'm fascinated by it because it's so niche. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's for moving companies. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I originally started doing attain anything, which was a podcast, you know, just personal development and business with a friend of mine, Chris Marhefka. And, you know, it was fun. We had a great time doing it. It was good just reinforcement for ourselves, but it, we had a lot of trouble getting traction with just people to listen to it basically. I mean, we had, we had some listeners. I mean, it wasn't like nobody listened to it, but, um, we ended up kind of, you know, ending that podcast. And I was like, man, like there's no moving company specific podcast. And, and so I was already like picking up the phone and calling other moving companies and other markets and having conversations and picking their brains, learning the business, like figuring out how I was going to run my company. And like, these conversations were awesome. And I was like, why don't I just start recording these conversations and like put them out? Like, I don't really know. I didn't really have like a, like an end game in mind, but I was like, only good things could come of this. Like I'm networking with these other companies, like, you know, this and that. So basically we started the grow your moving company podcast where I encourage other moving company owners to come on this journey with me as we grow our moving companies together. And, um, it's, it's been awesome. I mean, we've been able to work out a couple sponsorship deals with some of the vendors that we have already been working with that are like moving industry specific. Uh, I think we've got like, I don't know, somewhere over 13,000 downloads since we started doing it just over a year ago. So like there's, and I get emails and, and Facebook messages all the time from these moving companies and you know, I go to these conferences and I feel like a, uh, almost like a, a D list celebrity because <laughs> like people like listen to this thing and like, it's super niche, but like it, it, it works. And like people, I mean, it's, I think it was just something that was needed because there was not a single moving company specific podcast that I could find that existed before we started this podcast and moving companies seem to enjoy it. Has there there been a story or something that just like completely blew your mind from somebody that you, yeah, yeah. I can't, 
can't think of anything. Oh, well, actually, I will tell you one real quick. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how much time we have. But um, so there's a moving company that I talked to um, called Black Tie Moving, and they're originally based in Dallas. Now they're based up in Nashville, um, and they're growing like gangbusters. I mean, they're already fr- they've been in business for like six years, and they've already got like 12 locations, and they're franchising and everything. But part of what propelled them to that, they were doing a move in Nashville at their Nashville location, which is where they're headquartered now. They started in Dallas. They shortly after moved to Nashville and they're doing a move and they're in this, 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 this mansion and it's all this fine artwork and musical instruments and this and that. And somebody was like, this is somebody like we're in Nashville right now. Like this is somebody that we've heard of. And so they start, um, uh, you know, trying to kind of figure out who it is. And so they find out that it's the lead singer for Rascal Flats that they're moving. And so the manager like goes down there or maybe the, maybe it was the owner goes down there and like, you know, talks with, uh, the, the lead singer for rascal class. I can't think of his name right now, but they start talking with him. They're like, you know, the, it's like a five day move. It's like a $25,000 move. It's a massive job. And you know, they knock it out of the park. They do a great job. And right as the lead singer of rascal flags getting ready to write the check, they, the, the owner stops him and says, listen, make this check out to your favorite charity. We'll comp the entire thing. And so he donates this $25,000 move dollar check to his favorite charity. And the lead singer of Rascal Flatts was so taken aback by it. He's like, I gotta be a part of this company. Like you guys did a phenomenal job, you know, like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So they got him, I think I want to say his name's Gary something. I can't think of his last name, but he bought into the company and has propelled them to help, you know, open up locations huh. and franchise and this and that. And so now Rascal Flats, anytime they're opening a new market, will do a concert in that new market and any realtor can bring a guest for free. No like way. A realtor and a guest gets in for free to like help them grow. So they're not in any markets that we're currently in right now. I hope they don't come to <laughs> right. a market because it's hard to compete with that. But uh, but it was that was a really cool story. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So so and um, and so you were. I mean, before the podcast, we were chatting a little bit. This is what always happens. Is we you get the good content <laughs> we, before we pick, we record. start while we're setting up. We're just just chatting, and you said that you were about to invite competition onto your podcast yeah yeah so tell me tell me a little bit about that well, brad if you're listening you know i, <laughs> I told call all about uh all about our, our uh text exchange but yeah so uh we've not really brought on a direct competitor i had one guest that came on that has a location in tampa but he's also he's based out of nashville too so i guess he's he's kind of competition but like like hometown competition is like a different kind of competition. Sure. Like, you know, Brad and I have been competing against one You're another. You're talking about Brad from UF Movie. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. 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 So I try not to say Pepsi if I'm working for Coke, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no. So, so Brad from UF Movie guys, um, you know, I, you know, that's probably. Who's also a good friend of mine. And yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what's so interesting about like the, you know, Gainesville, you know, is that you like, we really know everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like, know? This, this would be an interesting podcast. Podcast. Yeah. Like, you know, like, because I mean, we're, we're friends. Like, we don't, we don't like hang out, but like, you know, we'll, I'll see Brad, we'll talk, we text each other from time to time and, and everything. So, you know, we'll, it, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be fun. It'll yeah, be that, fun. that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested. To, I yeah. want to hear that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what it's like interviewing for sure your for sure. competition. And, but I mean, you, before the podcast, you put it in a, a really good light for me because I was like, I mean, really with competition, like, you're, your competition though. And, and you said, yeah, it's kind of like on, you know, in high school football or something, yeah. you know, it's like, like PJ golfers, like all hang out in the locker room and then they go on yeah, each they... other's throats on the course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. No, so. but I mean, sometimes your competition I've found is actually a great person, like a great person to network with, because if we get booked up or if they get booked up, I mean, we can be the source that they refer us to. I right. mean, if you're on good terms with your competition, like, you know, if, if you can't take on any more moves, you still want to take care of that customer. And if you trust this other company in town, even though, you know, you're usually trying to win customers, you know, away from them, it can be an option to be like, well, you know, I really can't help you right now. And a lot of times, what does a customer say? They say, well, do you, is there anybody you can refer? And you want to help the customer because ultimately, you know, that's just what, 
customer service is all about is like, nope, sure. can't think of anybody. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes if it's like a really good, you know, move, you know, you, you try to squeeze it in, obviously. But like we've yeah. gotten a lot of business just because our competition was either booked or, you know, they couldn't take it on for some reason or, or whatever. I mean, it's just good to have, you know, people that you're on good terms with. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we, we do the exact same thing. I mean, it's, it's funny. I mean, even this year we made a huge shift at the, at the beginning of the year, we decided that new scooters for less wasn't going to service scooters that we don't sell. Hmm. Like like models, so like, you know, if you bring your hunt before, you could bring your Honda Ruckus to us, and we would service it. Uh, but these things just always put things on delays because we'd have to order parts. We don't stock mm. all those parts. We stock yeah. parts for the stuff that we sell in our showroom. Yeah. So we'd have to order parts, and the scooter would have to sit here for a couple of weeks. That never really makes the customer happy because right. they're, they're waiting. They're waiting when it really has nothing to do with us at all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're we're waiting on the shipping company, you know, to send the part, or the company to send the part. So. You know, it's the, it was those things. So we, we had made that call, but when we did that, you know, we, we had a lot of these customers who were, you know, coming to us for these things and it's like, all right, well, we got to send them somewhere. So, you know, we made sure like that we could take care of them by sending them to, you know, other great companies here in town that service those scooters. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that, that's good. Always doing what's, what's best for the customer. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of cool to look out for each other a little bit. <laughs> so, Mike, any uh any last things before we wrap the show up? I think I'm going to save it for the side hustle. We doing a side hustle? Yeah, we're totally I'm gonna, doing I'm gonna a side, save hustle. It for the side hustle. All right. So, so, Mike saving his next question for the side hustle. Yeah. Be sure to check it out. These are going to be I don't know how many we're going to put out for free before. So, we're trying to set up a Patreon uh-huh. so where we put like a, a little piece of content on there nice. cuz guys we are we're going to start raising money for this podcast this thing is costing us a lot of money i don't know if i've even told if i've even put it out there but but i calculated the other day we are definitely around the $25,000 investment mark at this point episode 68 and that just has to do with equipment the time labor the editing if you guys haven't seen the video version i we know a lot of people listen on uh on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and, and that's great. But if you want to see the video version, James does an excellent job editing mm-hmm. the video version and uh, you know, it just, it, it takes time, it takes money. So we are really looking for the community to support us and, and back this baby up. Uh, so we're gonna be selling, all, I mean, we're gonna be selling swag. swag. I'm gonna have like some WoG and V, you know, t-shirts coming soon and mugs and stuff that you can buy to, that will just, and all the money is just gonna go to funding our podcast. So, uh, so we're excited about that and, and Patreon will be one of those things that we do to, to bring in a little bit of money to keep it going. <laughs> so, um, wait, dude, where can everybody, you know, where can they find you? Where they can, where, where can they hire you for work? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, two college Uh, we've, we've optimized the, the, the form on the website to try to make it as easy as possible. Fill out okay. a form. Somebody will get in contact with you within 24 hours. You can call us three, five, two, four, four, eight, nine, zero, nine, five, uh, or eight, five, five move bro. Uh, you can call us at either of those phone numbers. Um, those are the best two ways. Cool, man. Yeah. Any last words? Anything else? Gonna no. sign off? Yeah, no. This Guys. Has been, this has been awesome. Dude, they, yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for waking up early and being here. Thanks for doing those push-ups and getting the blood flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Get, getting, getting, ready, getting ready to go. And, um, get, and, you know, world, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast, bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Whoa. Give me a whoa. Whoa. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> right, we will see you later. Bye.